Hello guys, welcome back to the third part of the tutorial for multi-threading. So in last tutorial we have seen how to create two threads, one using a, a thread class by string of thread class and one using a runnable interface. So in general we have two threads. Again you can see we have two starts, so indirectly we are creating two threads, right? Now, now we'll do some modification in this code to just uh, make, make our code more efficient or more, uh, we can reduce the number of lines required. Now say this, now tell me one thing, if we talk about this R, how many times we are using this reference? The, re the requirement for any type of reference for an object is so that uh, in, in future if you want to use this R, you can use it. But here you can see this R we are using only once, right? That means we can use this line here. This is your object. So what I can do is I can just cut this code and paste it here, it will still work, it's because we just want to pass an object, because thread constructor will ask you for object of runnable interface or you can say instance of runnable interface and we have done it, right, so we have, we have defined a very, uh, defined a, uh, object here which is a uh, runnable object and then we are providing the implementation for this, so this is an anonymous object and this is anonymous class. That means we can do the same thing using this concept also. And now if I run this, the output will be still same. We are getting the same output, right? We have hi, hello, hi, hello, and all those parallel processing. Now, so that's the, that's the advantage of using anonymous class. But since the introduction of Java 8, we have something called as Lambda expression. You know, that's the, uh, that's the beauty of Java. In every new version, we have something to uh, you know, explore. And this, now, now think about this. Your thread class will always ask you for object of runnable interface. That means anything in this bracket, anything is in this bracket which is defined in this LD symbol will be object of runnable. So why we need to specify that? Why we need to specify this runnable interface? Now, so uh, that means I don't require this line. Now, so let's remove this line. Since we are removing this that bracket, we have to remove this bracket also. Now, now the next part is why I require this run method. Since your runnable interface is a functional interface, or also, you can also call it as uh, SAM, which stands for Single Abstract Method Interface. That means in runnable we have only one method which is declared. In this scenario. You don't have to mention the method name. That means we just have to mention the number of parameters it will accept, not the actual function. Right? So we can remove this part also. Now, what we are remaining with is we are just remaining with this uh, this uh, bracket. So we'll leave these brackets here, and we are remain, remaining with this code. But to specify this code belongs to a run interface or run, run method. We just have to use a symbol called as arrow, and this is your lambda expression, right? We have replaced the whole code, which is boilerplate codes, which are extra coded with this lambda expression, and that's the beauty of Java. Or that's the beauty of uh, Java 8 lambda expression, right? So we can convert our code from the huge chunk of uh, lines into some smaller code. Again, we can reduce the number of lines also here. We can just say open my bracket here, close my bracket here, and then you can write everything there. It, it makes your code looks very simple. It, it, look, it makes your code look beautiful. Again, it's not difficult, right? It's not difficult. Uh, since you are seeing for the first time, maybe you will find some trickiness here, but it's not difficult. If you have a good knowledge of Lambda expression, this is amazing. So uh, my, my recommendation will be, go to some books for Lambda expression, or go to some videos of Lambda expression, Maybe in near future, I will start with the basics of Lambda expression. But for this tutorial, I have shown you how to work with threads from a normal thread to a Lambda expression. Now, maybe in, uh, in future, in future tutorial, tutorials, we'll have some advanced part in threads, maybe about concurrency or all those things. So I hope you got a basic general idea about threads. Now, again, if you like my video, please subscribe. And, and if you have any comments, Please, thank you so much.